Hi, I'm actor Ian Champion, and welcome to History of Horror Cinema, my personal podcast tour of the good, bad, and the ugly of horror movie history. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to hit subscribe. The Ape, 1940 Although Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff were partnered together in a number of films, their careers and opportunities ran at different levels. Since Frankenstein, Karloff had gradually managed to negotiate better pay and projects than his Hungarian colleague. Lugosi, meanwhile, continually struggled and had to take what parts he could get, earning substantially less than Karloff even when they were billed together. In the excellent book Poverty Row Horrors, Tom Weaver put it bluntly, the studio simply tossed Lugosi aside like a sucked orange. Whereas he was forced to work in an ever-decreasing spiral of quality, Karloff had the good fortune to limit his involvement with the Poverty Row Studios. He did, however, make one horror film for the infamous monogram, as opposed to Lugosi's total of nine notorious tours of duty beloved by bad movie fans as the Monogram Nine. Karloff had previously top-lined five of Monogram's Mr. Wong crime mystery series directed by William Nye between 1938 to 1940, and The Ape was to be the closing commitment to his contract, again helmed by Nye. It certainly bears all the hallmarks of being a contractual obligation album for the English actor, despite according it his customary professionalism. It was scripted by Kurt C. Odmack, who would have to wait another year to produce a screenplay that would make his name. 1941's The Wolfman. Whilst dabbling with Invisible Man sequels, he and Richard Carroll adapted Adam Hull Shirk's play, wherein an Englishman is cursed by a Hindu priest in India for killing a sacred gorilla, and thirty years later has vengeance carried out on him in America. Monogram had already filmed the story as The House of Mystery in 1934, but for this version, the writers junked everything except an ape disguise adopted by the protagonist. Karloff is required to channel another in his long line of mistrusted medical pioneers, and in fact with prosaic greying hair, moustache and glasses, looks very similar to the role he just played in Before I Hang. His Dr. Bernard Adrian is the MD of a working-class American community who seems the epitome of a kindly little house on the prairie country doctor. The locals are suspicious of him, though, over his rumoured use of selected folk as experimental guinea pigs during a paralysis epidemic, a vague notion that the poor script never reconciles. He is very fond of the young Francis Clifford, Maris Rickson, one of the better members of a lacklustre supporting cast. She is wheelchair-bound from polio, and for him represents another chance to do good after a same-aged girl and her mother both died under his attempted treatment. When the traveling circus comes to town, Frances and her grease monkey boyfriend, Jean O'Donnell, attend and enjoy a ringside seat at what is clearly an evening of stock footage under the big top. Monogram had indicated they would spend a pretty penny on this film. Well, there definitely isn't much evidence of many dollars. Later that night, all hell in the form of another monkey breaks loose after a fire. The ape, a better-than-usual man-in-a-suit portrayal of convincing mass and movement. The trainer is killed by the gorilla before it escapes, and is brought to Adrian, where Adrian suddenly realizes here is a way to gain a plentiful supply of the spinal fluid he needs for further experimentation. When asked for reassurance by the trainer, he gives none. Am I gonna die? We all have to die sometime. At least his kindly bedside manner is saved for young Francis. Here at least is an opportunity for Karloff to enliven the humdrum plot giving authority and fervor to scenes where he wills her to walk with tentative, marginal results. In the meantime, Henry Hall's Sheriff Halliday moseys along trying to make sense of it all, tracking the elusive ape with bloodhounds. He would seek further monogram monkey shines with Bella Lugosi in The Ape Man in 1943, and then Voodoo Man the year later. The gorilla finds his way to Dr. Adrian, as does everyone, it seems, regardless of their prejudice toward him. During an ensuing fight with him, a vial of precious serum breaks before Adrian stabs him to death. Now what will Adrian do? A second fortuitous idea occurs to him. More murders are committed with the victims showing signs of spinal puncture marks, one of which, the selfish bullying moneylender Mason, Philo McCulloch, at least deserves it, 
Could these be the handiwork of the M.D. or the missing ape at large? In its sole borrowing from the original stage play, the culprits are one and the same. As a dying, unmasked Adrian expires on the porch, his last redeeming act is to induce Francis to fully walk for the first time. There, you see, he gasps as death relieves the film star of any more Poverty Row filming. The ape is a slapdash effort, and yet more evidence of Hollywood horror's inability to let go of that pesky gorilla obsession. Karloff's character is never given the means via the leaden dialogue and plot to earn our sympathy, except for a single moment where Selma Jackson retracts his former expulsion of Adrian from his foundation twenty-five years ago for his spinal fluid tinkerings. Karloff sags against the door slightly in a human moment of vulnerability and poignancy, but too late. It does not stop him from an absurd killing spree in hardly the most discreet disguise. The baton of bad horror movies would now be passed to Bela Lugosi to run hamstrung by the worst of it under the studio's forthcoming schedule, as we shall see. Thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to hit subscribe.